Which is playing Black Green Devotion, or will it be Festus Resendez playing Mono Red Devotion? As Ravitz is going to play a Temple of Malady to fire things off, Resendez is going to play a Mountain and no one drop. So now for turn two, it's very important. Yes, very famous area, I believe. Yeah, it's hard to keep pace with Mono Black Devotion if you don't do something on turn one. So it, it's really critical for, for Festus to have something of significance here. And that is certainly something of significance. A Burning Tremissary into a Magma Jet allow him to scry. He's looking at a Mutavault plus a Mystery card. There are a couple of lands over there. It looks like he may be looking at Mountain Mutavault. I don't think he's going to have much interest in those. Maybe the Mutavault just because it's such a powerful card. Mutavault's very good against Mono Black, and Festus needs to get up to at least four mana for Fnatic, so he needs to keep some lands here. Temple of Malady the draw. Ravitz is going to deploy that. Take a look at the top card. He's going to fire off Devour Flesh to take care of that Burning Tree Mystery. And of course, you know, he's not going to find a better spot. You know, Devour Flesh just wants to kill anything. It's, of course, not targeted removal. But I think the more important thing right now is Ravis is clearing the way for Desecration Demon, and that's key. Desecration Demon is Black Devotion's by far best card in the matchup. That's the key. If he's able to land it on a stable board, it's going to be tough on Festus. This is as close as it's going to get to a stable board. There is a 6-6 six, six Flyer in the face of a Boros Reckoner, which I imagine Ravis has no interest in blocking. But the race is certainly on right now. There's a Muta Vault there for Resendez. Let's see what the follow-up play is going to be. You do see a Firefish Striker in the grip. This is a way for Ravitz to steal the game. As in comes Resendez 4-3. Ravitz is going to go down to 15. Resendez already playing his land for the turn. It was that Muta Vault. And now he's going to add some more things to the board. Looks like it will be perhaps the Striker. And it is. So he does have potential Battalion here if Ravitz does not have a removal spell. And that allows him to get around this Desecration Demon. Demon Trigger will be placed on the stack. Looks like it is time to come in for six. No sense in holding back. Resendus is going to go down to 16. This is a Pack Rat. Ravis will follow up with another Pack Rat. So deploying just a few creatures before passing the turn back over to Resendus. There's a Shock to take care of one. I think he has a Searing Blood in his hand to take care of the other. Searing Blood, a really critical card to have against Mono Black. You can only spend so many of your resources removing creatures, so if you're able to do that while dealing damage, very important. That's exactly what he's able to do. Three damage is going to go to Ravitz. He's going to go down to 12. Genesis can also fire up the old Mutaval right now, so this is a beautiful turn here for Festus. And with two copies of Bio Blight in the deck, I believe that I would animate the Mutavault rather than attacking. Festus is going to take a slightly riskier route, but it does allow him to be more man efficient in subsequent turns. Ravis taking a look at a Lifebane Zombie, a Grey Merchant, and an Underworld Connection. So it's very important for Josh to be able to find a fifth land, but he does not do it, and that is going to do it. So Festus Resendez does defeat Josh Ravitz in game number one. Mono Red Devotion has not lost a game in these elimination rounds, and it's up a game right now against Black Green Devotion as we're going to bring it back to the booth. It is time for our full year trivia giveaway. I've got the question. You very quickly have the rules. All right. Again, Cedric's going to ask you the question. Tweet your answer at SCG Life, hashtag SCG Premium. Of the correct responses, one will be selected at random for a full year of Star City Games Premium content. Don't worry about responding first. It's not a race. Just get your answer in accurately. And please keep in mind that this trivia giveaway is run at the sole discretion of StarCityGames.com and that Twitch is in no way affiliated with this giveaway. Well, we're going to do what we normally do next weekend, you and me. I know we're traveling. I'm going to have more fun than you. But the question is, where are we going to be next weekend? Why, is that, the, why is that the case? Because I'm getting there tomorrow. Oh, okay, yes. So that, I'm going to have more fun than sure, you. Sure, that's, that's fair. I, I'm not saying you can't catch up. Because you're very capable. My, my hours of leisure time are very fun dense. So yes, think, they are. I yes, think sir. we'll be able to catch up. But yeah, you do have an edge getting out there much earlier. I have, a, I have a big edge. In theory, you shouldn't be able to catch up. But as you said, your fun time is very fun dense. Well, the tournament ends around midnight on Sunday. <laughs> and my flight out is... Uh, 10 o'clock in the morning on Monday, sure so is. that's 10 hours. That is that you. Were I guess nine. That. I have to get to the airport, but we'll we'll we'll, we'll say, let's split the hairs. Nine and a half. Yeah, we'll, nine and a half, <laughs> nine and a half hours. We'll touch base after the podcast. We'll 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 or during the podcast, we'll sure. measure up who had more fun. I think we certainly will. Where are we going to be next weekend? Hashtag SCG Premium again. We'll announce the winner at the conclusion of our final round. It's time to turn our attention to these sideboards now. Ravitz getting dispatched very quickly, but he does have some options that are available. Three staff of the Death Magus, a Primeval Bounty, Dark Betrayal, two Doomblade, two Agari Charm. Two Erebos got the Dead Vraska the Unseen, and three copies of Duress. What do you like? Well, Staff of the Death Magus is not ideal here. He's not playing against Burn, but it's still an upgrade over other cards he has in his deck. The two Doomblades and the two Golgari Charms, additional removal is very valuable here as well. So that's those are the cards he's going to go to, I imagine. The cuts being, I believe, Underworld Connections is the first card that has to go. Has to go, yeah. And in my experience, playing the red side of the matchup, 
I think that Pack Rat is a worse card against Red than Thoughtseize is because it's a giant Searing Blood target, and it's very rare for the game to break where you could just make Pack Rats and win the game that way against a deck with, you know, Shocks and, and Searing Bloods and so forth. So uh, I actually think Thoughtseize is the better card, but a lot of people just instinctually remove all the cards that deal damage to themselves when they're playing against Mono Red, which is totally reasonable. So those are the decisions that, that Josh has to make here. On, Re on Resendez's side, excuse me, you mentioned how good Searing Blood is against Pack Rat. We saw it happen in the first game, but only has one in his main deck. You'll see the three more in his sideboard along with four Skull Crack, two Harness by Force, four copies of Museum Mortars, and two Toil Trouble. Now, now, this is the type of thing where, you know, the, the, having the deck list available is a really big hope, help for Festus in this matchup because the difference between Night Veil Spectre and Life Bane Zombie, in my mind, is what tips the balance on whether you want additional copies of Searing Blood. And you don't always have that information when you're going into the sideboard games. Festus knows that Ravis is playing four copies of Life Bane Zombie. That, alongside his four Pack Rats and four Mutabolts, means that he can't really sideboard in a way that allows him to avoid Searing Blood altogether. So if I was in Festus' seat, I would be bringing in all three copies. He may want the Skull Cracks. I'm not a big fan of them, by and large, against Mono Black Devotion, because I think the fight's over Desecration Demon and not really Grey Merchant. But I know that a lot of people just kind of instinctually bring it in. Harness by Force is a card that some people may like against Desecration Demon. I'm not a huge fan uh, of it because... Uh, if they have a land and a mutable up, it's kind of a struggle. Uh, and the four mortars are justifiable as well. And even the four, the two toil and troubles too, because Josh is going to be having a lot of cards in his hand at various spots. So his, every card in his sideboard here is justifiable. If I was in his seat, I would probably only bring in the Searing Bloods, but he may want the Skull Cracks as well. Well, we will be underway in game number two here, two here excuse me, in just a moment. Festus Resendez looking for the clean sweep through the finals. Currently up a game, has not lost the game in the elimination rounds. Impressive, impressive stuff. The black devotion matchup is good. It is not quite that good, as Festus has been demonstrating thus far, but him getting through the elimination rounds the way the bracket has been set up for him is no surprise. Been easy breezy. Yeah. I mean, there's only really one bad matchup, in my mind, in the elimination rounds for him, and that is the uh, red devotion list that got dispatched in the quarterfinals. Yeah. Suppose this was a good choice for this particular weekend. Well, it, you know, if, if, if you knew the top eight was going to be like this, certainly. Yeah. You know. The thing with Mono Red Aggro here is just the Mono Blue Devotion matchup is horrible. Yeah. And if you avoid that, most of the other matchups are fine. And some of them are quite good. You can at least play. Yes, you can at least play. That's Mono Blue. You, you really can't even play. You cannot, you cannot beat anything they cast on turn two or turn four. And they usually have something. <laughs> <laughs> so, I imagine that's the case. Yeah. Ravitz looks like he may be sending it back. Not sure if he's shuffling his deck or not at this point. It looks like I think he is sending it back. Again, he is in a rough matchup here. Resendez is going to take a look at his opener. There's a Fire Drinker, Seder, a Mountain. He's got two lands. There's a, Mut a Mutavolt among them. It looks like it's a pretty good hand. This is potentially a, a big breakthrough for, for Festus. Relatively unknown coming into this event. Uh, one game away from winning an over 700-person standard open, going through three great players to get there. David Bauer, Owen Turtwald, and potentially Joshua Ravitz here. It would be a very, very impressive win, and maybe this is the deck that finally plays spoiler to everyone playing Black Devotion. Well, it is one of the best decks in the format you can play against Black Devotion, in my mind. Now, we do have to keep in mind, of course, that a lot of these Black Devotion lists that we have seen, not only in this tournament, but the Invitational as well, they are without Farika's Cure and Drowning Sorrow. Yeah, and I don't think Ravitz has zero of those cards. Oh, yeah. Yeah. He has Death of the Death Magus, but that is more for burn than this matchup. It's fine in this matchup, but uh, usually, in my experience, when they, when they cast Staff on turn three, they would have been better served casting either Hero's Downfall or Night Veil Spectre. So it's not the highest impact card. It can be fine in certain spots, but... Kravitz taking a look at his opener. He doesn't look thrilled with the six cards, but he knows probably Mulligan to five is a fool's errand. So he is going to keep this hand. Temple of Malady is going to put the top card to the bottom. It looks like he may have kept the one lander and hoping to run off some lands with the Temple. Resendez is going to play a Fire Drinker Seder, pass the turn back over to Ravitz, who draws a card. It's not a land, and it looks like it may be a quick one here. And I, I, Festus's hand looks exceptional, too. A Firefish Striker in for two comes Resendez. Ravis is going to draw a card. It's not a land. He else, all he can do is kick it back. Rosendez is going to untap. This is a mountain. Maybe it's a Mutavault instead. It looks like it will be a Mutavault. And Ash Zealot, we're coming across for six points of damage. Ravitz down to 12. Even if Ravitz had a good hand, it would be a struggle for him to keep up here. But 
uh, Festus's draw is merciless here. Mutavol comes rolling off the top, but I imagine Ravis would prefer that it was a swamp so he could cast a Bile Blight. This is a mountain. Gonna fire up the old Mutavol in for eight we go. Ravitz does have a removal spell to cast. It's a Doom Blade, just where to fire it off. You gotta kill something. Looks like he's gonna go with Ashtal to lower the devotion count. So six will come across. Ravitz will go to six. Resendez, I believe, even has a follow-up play here, potentially. He does not. He'll just pass the turn. Does have a shock to cast. Ravitz will draw a copy of Overgrown Tomb. A little bit awkward. All he can do is pass the turn. Shock going to go upstairs. Ravitz goes down to four. And I think this is going to be our last turn of this game, Patrick. I, I, with, the, with the hand that Festus has here, I don't even think one removal spell gets him out. And yeah. the extension of the hand wow. is going to do it. Festus Resendez, and you can see how happy he is, wins this match over Joshua Ravitz. 6-0 through the elimination rounds, and he is your Star City Games standard open champion here in Columbus. Of course, an unfortunate draw there for Josh in the, in the second game, but uh, like I said, the quality of Festus's hand there, I think even if Ravitz has a solid seven-card hand, he's going to struggle to keep up. No significant sideboard cards for the matchup, just a couple spot removal spells to bring in and to have a